After posting my very first Project Life spread for 2023 in my 6x8 album this past week on Instagram, I had a ton of questions about how I am using Photoshop to help me create the digital versions of these pages in order to make putting them together physically so much easier. Today, I am taking you behind the scenes and showing you my full process for my second week of Project Life. Let's dive in. If you haven't seen the layout that I am talking about, this is the one in question. This year for 2023, I have taken my Project Life documenting project and shrunken it down into a six by eight rather than a nine by 12. So I can include it in the same album as the rest of the stories that I'm telling throughout the year. I love having everything in one place, knowing where to go when there is a story that I want to go back and reference again. Today, what I want to show you inside of Photoshop is how I am using the layer templates I created, which are also available in my Etsy shop, link in the description box down below, how I'm using those layer templates to make this whole process super easy, especially when we get over to the table, they come together within 15 to 20 minutes. It's amazing. Once I show you the full process of putting together a week of Project Life, so we're going to be working on week two together, and then on Instagram on Monday next week, you'll see this one actually come together in real life. Um, once I show you that one, I'm also going to take you through the process of designing very quickly just a story, just a six by eight deeper dive story using the stories by the month kit and stash cards and all of that kind of stuff. So the same process can be followed whether you're using a Photoshop template or not, whether you are doing project life or you're doing six by eight or you're doing nine by 12 or 12 by 12, the same process applies. I will also say that there are some parts of the process that I'm going to move through very quickly. Um, because this is not intended to be a teach you how to use Photoshop from start to finish. This is just showing you behind the scenes of what I'm doing to design my layouts. If Photoshop is a program that you are hoping to learn more about, I do have a full class with over 30 lessons on my Patreon. You can join my Patreon also link down this in the description box if you are looking for um, more class type content, more tutorial type content on how to use Photoshop in general. Today, we're just gonna do the behind the scenes. I'm gonna show you my process. So let's head on over to the computer and get started. First place we're going to get started on the process of designing a layout on the computer and printing it out prior to actually putting it together is in the selection of the photos. We're going to go into my Shutterfly account here where I've created a folder that is specifically for 2023 week two, which would have been the 9th through the 15th of January since I document Monday to Sunday. After I already go through my phone and delete out any of the pictures that I don't like, ones that are maybe blurry or my subject isn't even in the picture or, I mean, we all have pictures on our phones that we're never ever going to use in any kind of capacity. So I just go ahead and delete those off and then I upload to the cloud only the photos I like, which is nice because when I come in here, I know that the photos I'm seeing are my true selection of pictures that I could use in my week. From here, I'm going to select the photos that I like the best. So I know this is oftentimes a process that can be a little tougher for some. For me, I'm just picking the ones that either make me smile, where the people either look most themselves or they look happiest. Like I absolutely love this picture of my daughter. She's laughing after making a silly face. I would totally add that to my project life. Or I also have photos in here where my daughter is kind of yelling as I'm taking her picture. And here my son is yelling as I'm taking his picture. So I would select both of those because I like that they are both making a very similar face. And that could be a funny thing to add to my project life as well. 
With Project Life, I am generally telling more snippets of story rather than going in depth into the story. This year, as I'm approaching my storytelling, when I pull up my pictures for the full week, so today is Monday the 16th, which means that last week through the 15th is officially over, and I can take a look back through my week of photos to identify one or two stories that I might want to go a little bit deeper into. Sometimes those stories make themselves known based on my photos. For example, I could tell the story of um, the kid's bath. We just finished renovating their bathroom, so they took their very first bath in their own bathroom. This past week, they've been using our bathroom for the last year and a quarter, so that was a really big moment for us. That could be a bigger story that I talk about. So lots of you know, stories that I could go deeper into, I really just want to select one or two for the week. And it's okay if I don't go in depth on all of them, because I can still tell snippets of the story in Project Life. Once I have identified what are the big stories that I want to tell, then I'm going to make decisions to select most of the photos or most of the stories that I want to tell from the week that are not included in those larger stories. That doesn't mean that some of those photos might not make their way into the page itself. They probably will because I might like to have those photos in the project life as a week at a glance as well. But in my journaling, I'm going to talk a lot more about the, the smaller stories, right? Another thing that I do as I am calling my stories together, calling my photos together, is I pull out my daily journal. My daily journal is a project that I work on every night. I sit down, journal a little paragraph about what happened that day, my thoughts about the day, my feelings about the day, maybe something funny that somebody said, or, you know, a book or a movie that I'm watching. Just all of these different little pieces of information about my day that goes into the journal. Because over time, even after a week has passed by, I find that I forget a lot of a lot of what happened earlier in the week. So I will also go back to my daily journal, read through all of my journaling to identify if there are any stories in there that are not depicted in my pictures because I still might want to bring some of those stories into my project life in the words, even though they're not necessarily going to be in the pictures, if that makes sense. So I selected, I think about 12 to 14 pictures out of here that I am thinking about putting into my project life. Once I have those selected and downloaded, I add them into a folder on my computer. So this is just in my documents. I have my 2023 projects. Inside of 2023 projects, I have my specifically scrapbooking projects. And then I have my 2023 yearbook. And then I have my January folder. Inside of my January folder holds the flow of what I'm hoping my yearbook is going to look like. So we start with the title page and then Project Life Week 1 and then two deeper stories, Project Life Week 2, two deeper stories, Project Life Week 3, two deeper stories, and so on and so on, right? So I'm going to specifically work on Project Life Week 2. In here, I have those photos that I downloaded added into the folder. Now I just need to think about, based on the photos that I have, um, their, whether they are landscape or uh, vertical, whether they, um, whether there are pictures that I would want to be bigger rather than smaller, I'm going to kind of mull that over while at the same time taking a look at the templates that I can potentially use to tell my stories. These are templates that I created. They are usable as both a PDF or as the PSD, the Photoshop um, file. The Photoshop file is what I'm going to be working with today, but I also have the PDF versions of these pages printed off already in my stash because I want to go ahead and have the templates on just some white copy paper. I printed mine on, um, gosh, 28 pound copy paper, I believe, from my local UPS store. And then I trimmed them out so they're just ready to go and add stuff on top of them. But I'm going to use the template to help me 
cut down my photos to the correct size, make sure that my journaling is formatted at the right size, and figure out what components of the kit that I'm working with I can add into the template and it's going to work. And then I can use the actual physical copies of those pieces and put them into the layout. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. So as I was looking through the templates for myself this time around, I don't have a ton of variety of photos here. Um, I don't have, I don't know, I, there are some that I'm okay leaving out. Like these two are the same. It's the picture of my desk with the cats. I could 100% just leave those off and that would not be a big deal. Same thing with the one little word project on my desk. I could leave that off. It's okay because all that one little word stuff is in my one little word album. So it doesn't totally matter. Um, some of them I would want bigger. So like the two that I grabbed of the kids yelling at the camera, I want those to be a bit bigger or to have a little bit more of a story to them. Same with the photo of our family on the couch. I really love that one. Or these of the kids playing with the cats. So there are just some, some photos here that I'm thinking I might want to be larger. So what I'm going to do is look through my templates and pick one that's going to allow me to put more words because I have some other things I'd like to add to my layout that are not pictured and some larger spaces for some of these photos. What I ended up choosing was layer template number five and number eight. So number five is the one right here. Let me see if I can make this bigger even so it's a little easier to see. Oh yeah, there we go. So number five is this one right here, which is similar to a nine by 12 layout where there were three six by fours and three three by fours. Now these are much smaller than that because this is going to be a six by eight, but I wanted the scale to look very similar. So I've got three larger photos or three larger spots to add photos potentially and three smaller spots. The other layout that I chose was number eight and number eight is a little it's a little more varied, right? We've got some smaller areas. We've got some that are horizontal, some that are vertical. Um, this one I'm thinking will be really fun to add some embellishments to. And there's also a stamp set included in the kit that I will be using that I'm thinking of repeating in order to create a repetitive element for my journaling. So these are the two that I have picked this time. In my own file that I am keeping, um, that I'm keeping the photos and the products that I'm specifically using for this kit, I have added in the Photoshop version of these templates because that's what I'm gonna work with here for the week. So then I don't need this anymore. Okay, so now that we've got the photos and we've got the template, next what I want to do is pull in the products. For this week, I'm going to be using the Open Story Kit. I have the digital open story kit right here, and I wanna go in here and pull out the pieces that I'm thinking about using. These are pieces that I had previously pulled aside during my story planning, figuring that I could probably work them into my version of Project Life this year. The first one's going to be this paper that's got five little label-looking pieces. Actually, I'll shrink this down so we can put them side by side. That'll make it a little easier on me. So we've got the paper here um, that I'm thinking about cutting those out and adding them onto photos and we'll see what that looks like. Journal card wise I've got this patterned card that says open on it and then I've also got this black one that says open arms, open hearts, open minds. So we'll add that one into the mix as well. Those are the only cards that I had pulled aside and as I look through through here just to see, you know, are there any other cards that I would put, that's chipboard, <laughs> any other cards or papers, there they are, that I would potentially use, maybe the faces. Let's actually, let's put the faces over here too, because that's a kind of a cool pattern that I might be able to cut up. I'm thinking probably not on the bright, multi-colored, open, phrase paper. I think that's going to be a little too busy for the page that I'm creating. Then we're going to go into the stamps because I definitely have some stamps that I want to use. Primarily this one that says story. I think that one would be perfect for creating a repeated title card or title area to add then my journaling to. 
All right, I do also have some tiny phrase stickers and I also have the chipboard hearts that I would potentially add onto my layout as I'm putting it together. I'm not going to design those just because they're so small and those are just kind of an afterthought thing for me. I don't need to plan it. Okay, so we've got the product that I want. I'm gonna close out of that. I don't need it anymore. And now we can start pulling this into Photoshop and putting it together. So I'm gonna open up Photoshop Creative Cloud. And for me, this is going to be a double page layout. These templates are designed to be outside of the page protector. So when I am creating my layout, I want to create a new canvas that is 14 inches wide because each page is seven inches, seven by eight and a quarter. So 14 would double the width. And then the height is going to stay 8.25, 300 pixels per inch. And we're going to go ahead and create that. So this is going to be my mock-up of my full project life layout. From here, the next thing I want to do is open up the, let's go find my, there you are. <laughs> We're gonna open up the two templates that I'm going to use. When these open up, all of the components here are going to be separate. So you'll see that there are individual rectangles here and that is on purpose. And then there is the background. So what I want to do is copy or highlight all of the layers. So I'm gonna start up at the top one by clicking on it, go all the way to the bottom one, hold the shift key and click all the way to the bottom so that the background and the rectangles are all selected. Then I'm going to copy it, so Control C, go back to my full mockup and paste it on here with Control V. Now to get this moved into the correct position without altering where anything is, so keeping it as it is, but just shifting it over to the right, I want to transform it. So I'm going to hold down the control button while everything is still selected. So I have not clicked off of the pasted piece, right? Hold the shift button and press T for transform. That's going to put this kind of bluish line around the outside of the template and it allows me to move the entire piece all together. So I want this to go all the way to the right side. When I have it where I like it, I'm going to hit enter and now I can click off so nothing is selected anymore. So there is the right side of my page. The left side of my page is going to be this one that's got those three larger spots. Now I actually need to turn this page upside down before I copy and paste it. So we're gonna go up to image, image rotation, and we'll select 180 and it's going to turn it upside down, right? Then we're gonna follow the same process. So click on that top layer, scroll all the way to the bottom, hold the shift key and click on background. So that's going to select all of your layers, then copy it and paste it onto the full mockup. Without clicking off of the template, I want you to press Control and T for transform. And then now that we've got that whole piece, we can move it to the left side and hit enter. You'll notice there is this large white space in between the two pages. That is where you hole punch. So we don't want anything to be there. Otherwise, you'll hole punch through your journaling or your photos. So that's just pretend that that is where the holes are and your uh, binder rings are coming through. So now I can click off of the template. Everything is not selected anymore. And this gives us the full layout of what we're working with for week two. I can close out of these original ones, letting those go. And now we can start to fill things in. So let's start with the, let's see here. Let's start with maybe some pattern. I generally like to have one of these three cards or one of these three areas in the upper left-hand corner as a title page, a place where I can stamp in the dates that um, are included in this week of Project Life. So for that, I like to usually do some kind of pattern and then I'll put a label over the top and stamp on the label to say my dates. For this one, let's do the, let's do this open card pattern. So I'm going to open this up, select it, copy it, and then here's the trick. So with everything, so 
in my layers, you can see that nothing is selected, right? With my selection tool, I just want to click on wherever this is going to go. So I'm going to click on this rectangle. Then I'm going to paste. When you have a layer selected and you paste something on top, the layer is going to go directly on top of whatever the layer it was that you selected. So now I can move this on top of that section. I don't want to change the scale because the scale is correct to the actual physical card. When it's on top of the rectangle that I originally selected, we're coming down to the layers panel, right clicking on layer one and select create clipping mask. And that's going to put this little piece of paper inside the bounds of the rectangle. So we can see what that's going to look like. In this space, I will likely add some kind of label, whether that's a rectangle or a circle label. I'll date stamp in there, maybe add a little chipboard heart, and that will be my title card. Then I can move on to this spot, which I'm thinking I want this to be a photo. So let's open up a photo. Um, and maybe this one, I'll go ahead and do the kids. <laughs> so we'll do maybe Jonah on the top um, and maybe Izzy on the bottom. I have not edited any of these photos, so I do need to go through that process really quick. And then we can do the same thing as we did before. All right, so now I've got my photo fully edited. You can see that I have not cropped it. It is 56 inches wide and 42 inches tall. So it's very, very big picture. I don't need to crop it. All I need to do is the editing part and then the layer template's going to, going to do the rest. So what we wanna do is select our photo, copy it, go back over to the layer template here and select the rectangle where we want this photo to live. So I'm gonna click on this one right here. Then I can paste in my photo and you see how big it is here, right? And we're gonna come down into the layers panel, right click on layer number two and create clipping mask. That puts the photo inside of the rectangle. Now, how do we get this resized so that the photo is to scale and everything fits in there? To do this, we're gonna do the same trick as before. While we have the photo layer selected, we're going to hold control and hit the letter T on your keyboard for transform. And then we can adjust the photo. If your photo is warping, so as you are doing this, let me just give you an example. If your photo is warping like this, right? Where it's not staying to scale, I can tell you the problem is going to be right up here. In between the width and the height, there's this little lock key button. If you select that, then as you are transforming your photos or reducing the size, it's going to stay to scale. So we're going to reduce this down so that it fits in here the way I want it to. Adjust it a little bit more. I feel like I want this a little bit more like that. Yes. Oh, so cute. Okay. And then once I have it where I want it to be, I'm going to hit enter and it's going to bring everything into focus. So there's my first photo. I'm going to go ahead and follow the same process for the rest of the photos and the cards. Once I have all of those in place, we will reconvene and talk about the journaling, how to add the journaling into the mix and the stamping into the mix as well. All of my photos are now inserted into this template as well as the pattern papers or the journaling cards that I want to use. So we've got the three photos here on the left side and then three photos here on the right side. This leaves me with the space we've already designated as the title card or the title space. And then I've got four more empty spaces where I'm thinking I can put either stories or embellishments. Another thing that I have here or another idea that I have is on this pattern paper where there's going to be these wonky heart shaped faces is I want to turn this into a little pocket to hold some garden tabs that came on the three plants that I purchased, well, three of the four plants that I purchased uh, this week. And what I might do is actually print out some photos that I can adhere to the back side of the tags, cut down the tags so that you can see the name of the plant and maybe a picture, if it has a picture of the plant. Um, 
and add a add a picture to it or turn them into little tags. I don't know, something. The <laughs> The, what's important here is that I have three of these garden tags that are ephemera pieces that I think would be an additional fun way to add something into this layout. So I'm going to use this face spot for that, which means that I will probably want to have some kind of vellum pocket. Let's make a little, let's make a little rectangle here that's the same size okay so we'll pretend that this white rectangle that i have just made is vellum and that's going to be the pocket that will hold these little tags to help me visualize this a little bit better so all i did was i came over to the rectangle tool i drew a rectangle uh, it is colored currently white and i'm going to go to this opacity while this layer is still selected and put it at maybe like 70 percent um, and that gives you a little bit more of that faded look as though there is vellum on top of the on top of the pattern, if that makes sense. So this is going to be a pocket. So now let's figure out what to do with these other these four blank spots. My first thought is to grab this open to beginning again chipboard circle piece. And let's put that on here and just see where does this fit. So it would fit on this section i kind of like it over here the yellow playing off the yellow of my daughter's shirt there's some pink in here that's pulling in the pink that's fun or we could bring it down into the bottom right corner i actually think i like it better right here i kind of like that okay so let's say that that's going to go there next let's grab open where are you? This one. So this is one of the stamps included on the story stamp. It just is the word story. And I like that because it's a really easy way to just stamp or a super generic title that you can stamp onto a layout and then write whatever story you feel like telling. So with the PNG version of the stamp open, I am going to select all of it, copy it and add it onto my template. When I put it onto the template, the scale of the stamp is totally wrong. So what I want to do is come over to my spyglass, right click, and I want to view this entire page at print size. So that's going to be the actual size of what it will be when everything is printed. Then I can come back to my move tool. I'm going to make sure that the story stamp is selected and we're going to transform it. So that control T again with the physical stamp that I actually have in my hands right now, I'm going to hold the stamp set up to my screen. <laughs> this is just what I do to make it easy. And I'm going to shrink the word down until it matches the size of the stamp itself. And that's about what it is in real life. Okay, now that I have this scaled correctly, I can move it where I want it to go. So I definitely want one in this spot we can copy it paste it again i definitely want one in this spot and then is there enough room for one in this spot maybe i think so i think so we're gonna we're gonna give it a we're gonna give it a go because i like having three of that same sentiment on there okay so then i want to open up the uh, subtitle stamp that I want to use this moments and memories copying it pasting it again the scale is totally wrong I'm gonna hold up the physical version here so I can shrink it down to where it should be which I think is gonna be about there and then transform it one more time and then we're gonna add it into the places where we want it to go so there we go moments and memories let's do it again Moments and memories, and one more time. Moments and memories. Okay, so we've got my stamped titles ready to go. Um, before I do, let's see, what else? Let's look in here and see what else we've got. Oh, we also have this page, which I think is really fun and could potentially be used on this layout. I'm going to use my magic wand tool to get rid of, unlock this, get rid of the background. Okay. 
And now we've got these all kind of, they're not actually separated yet, but I can easily separate them. So using the marquee tool, let's go ahead and select one of these. P.S. If Photoshop is a program that you are trying to learn or uh, where you would like to practice more of these skills, learn more of these skills, have a more depth conversation about what I'm actually doing here. I do have a full Photoshop basics for scrapbooking class inside of my Patreon. That includes, I want to say, over 30 lessons uh, that specifically talk about the different parts of using Photoshop for scrapbooking. So how you can use Photoshop to alter cards, how to edit photos, how to uh, add journaling in multiple kinds of ways, how to print journaling on physical cards, um, how you can manipulate digital stamps to work for you. So all of this stuff that I'm going through really quickly, I go very in-depth on in that class. You can find a link to my Patreon down in the description box below, um, and that class is a part of the Patreon group. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this on here. So one of the things I was thinking about doing was adding some of these labels onto the photos, right? So I was thinking like, okay, what if I put this one here and then what I might need to do is adjust the photo a little bit more. Actually, maybe it needs to be bigger. Yeah, like that's a bit better. So we could put this one here and then I could write out a little bit of text because where this, where this overlaps the edge of the photo, I would cut it off, right? So we could maybe put that one there. Um, let's grab another one of these. So this one here, so the peach. Where might we put the peach? Um, I might put peach. I could turn it, right? And then add this one here. Ooh, and then I could do the same thing on the opposite side for my son. So let's grab like the yellow one. Put that one on here. What I like about doing my planning digitally before I print it out and do anything with it physically is it allows me to play with all of the different products before actually cutting into them. And then I can cut into them knowing that this idea is going to work. So I don't have to have the, uh, the hesitation that comes sometimes with altering our products. Okay. And what about green? I wonder if I can use them all. We'll find out. So let's do green next. Where could you go? This one could go right here, just like a little piece on that. And then the teal could come down. Like how can I, can I reduce this more? A little bit. Whoops, don't wanna turn you. Uh, maybe I wanna put this one like here. So what would this look like if um, if it was cut off, right? So let's go, this is rectangle. I wonder if I can rename this. Let's call this family, couch family, <laughs> just so I can find it. You do not have to do this. I just want to see, you know, what would this look like? Where's couch family is what I'm looking for. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I can put this. If you want to see what would this look like cut off, all you need to do is put it above the photo that's currently clipped inside of the rectangle and then create clipping mask on the label as well. You know, so like where would I put this? Maybe like right there and I could put some journaling in it. Right? I think that one would be good. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. Um, all right. So 
I'm going to go ahead and clip all of those into the photos just so I can better see what I'm looking at. And then we will add in journaling blocks and then I will show you how I print everything off so we can actually get this onto a layout. All right, so everything is clipped into its place and we can see what it's going to look like when we've got everything printed and cut out and added on top and trimmed down, all that fun stuff, right? Now, to add my text, I'm going to click onto the box that I want to add my text box to, grab my text tool, which I am generally using Remington Noiseless as my font, and between nine, well, between eight and 10 point font, just depending depending on my mood, I guess, or how well it fits into the spot. Okay, so I'm gonna add in some fake text here. So that would be text box one. And then this one up here would be text box two. And then this one down here would be text box three. Um, okay. And then I think for the labels themselves, I'm going to handwrite in those and not type on them. That'll just be a little bit easier. Plus I'll know exactly where they're going to go on the photos once I have them all added and glued on top. Okay. So all that would be left to do would be fill in your stories, fill in the words, and then we need to print things. So let's pretend that everything is as I want it to be and I'm ready to print it all off. What I'm going to do because, well, let me back up to go forward. You could just print it off just like this, right? You could do everything digitally, print it off and hole punch it and stick it in your album and you're done. That's your project life. But because I am working with a, I want to work with hybrid products, I want some of this to be digitally designed and formatted and some of it to be using the physical products that I get in my kits. Because that's the way that I am working, I want some differentiation between the background paper and my photo paper and my cardstock paper. I like the differences of the texture. I like having the dimension of adding things on top of paper. So as I said before, I have already printed off my template pages, which I can quickly, can I quickly show that to you? Yes, I can. Uh, they look like this. So here's the PDF version of the page that I'm working on right now. There is a faint line that goes all the way around the outside that gives you the line to cut along in order to make this a seven by eight and a quarter. I printed all of those already. I have a stash of them. So all I need to do is print off the photos and print off the journaling that I want to add on. For the photos themselves, in order to keep them formatted correctly in order to keep them at the correct size. What I need to do is come to the photo. So I'm just going to click on this photo of Jonah, my son, come over into the layer template and I'm going to select the rectangle that it is clipped inside of. So the arrow that it's pointing down to. Once I have those two things linked or selected, I can right click and I want to merge the layers, although I can't do that with this one. Here. So actually, let's go ahead and just, before I do anything, I want to save this because I want to remember what this looks like <laughs> when it's all the way it's going to be. So I'm going to save this as 2023 Project Life Week 02 Layout. Okay. And I'll save it as a JPEG to make it easier to see in the file. All right. Now that I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and delete off all of these labels. Okay, so we've cleaned that up. Then I'm gonna come to the photo of my son, click on it. We're going to hold shift and also click on the rectangle beneath it. Right click and merge the layers together. And I need to do this with all of the photos. So merge that layer together, click on the bath picture and the rectangle below, merge that layer together. This one, Oh, I did change the name to cat door. <laughs> it says cat door. Merge it together. This one will still say rectangle. So yours are all going to say rectangle unless you rename them. So selecting those two, right click, merge them together. And then the family couch photo, merge those together. So all of my photos are now exactly the right size that they should be. And when I move them, it's only, it's going to move the entire, the entire rectangle. 
Other than that, that's the only formatting piece you need to do in order to print these off. If you're working with digital uh, components like digital cards and you want to print the digital card on a separate kind of paper, then you would do the same thing for these. You click on the card itself, the rectangle below, right click and merge those layers together. That's not something I'm doing though, so I don't have to do that. Now I want to open a new canvas. I'm gonna print these on a six by four photo paper. So then I can come to my mock-up. I'm gonna grab this photo of my son, copy it and paste it onto the six by four. And then I should have enough room perhaps for the couch photo. Let's try it. Once I have that on here, I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees so I can fit it on here. Oh, it's too big. Okay, well, that can go on a separate one. <laughs> Let's try this one. Although this one might be too big as well. Let's find out. 90 degrees. Oh, yeah, you're too big. Okay, so no to you as well. That's okay. How about the little ones? No. All right, well, I guess it's just gonna be the one on the six by four, which means probably the same thing for this one of my daughter, so they can be printed on their own. And then let's get another one for these, which I'm thinking I can get both of those long skinny pictures on the same canvas. Yes, I can. And then the square, will you fit? Will you fit the opposite direction? Just trying to maneuver these so I can print as much as possible without wasting paper, but it looks like I'll end up wasting some. That's okay. All right, so that's going to be that. <laughs> So we'll have four six by four pictures for me to print. The other thing I'm going to print off is my journaling. For this, I have clear matte sticker paper that I will print my journaling on, and then I can just stick it down onto my templates. So for this, I cut down the paper to six by four rectangles, just because it's easier for me to print one week at a time that way. Then what I would do is come over here and grab my text box copy the text box and add it onto the six by four and do the same thing for the other two text boxes like so and this one like so so that I know to cut in between and in between right and it gives me my different boxes of text and then I am good to print so I'll print this off on sticker paper I will print these off on photo paper, and then I can bring over my physical supplies to use as I am putting this together in, in the real world, not the digital world, right? And that's essentially the process that I am using to plan out my layouts prior to creating them in, in the physical form. This is the same process that I follow for my stories as well. In fact, let's close out of this really quick. Yeah, because I can bring this up again later. I also have eight and a half by 11 inch paper, so maybe I'll use that this time. We shall see. But I'll need to come back in here and, and do all that. Once I have the layer template the way that I like it, all of my photos are there, everything's formatted, then I actually just go ahead and delete everything out of here because I don't need it anymore. All I need is this in order to take the photos and add them to a new canvas to print. Um, however, I do want to show you one more thing. Let's go to the yearbook, January. And for this one, I wanna show you a story that I am working on um, that's going to go for the same week, but it's a deeper dive story. For this one, I want to use this photo of our family as my main story photo. So I want this to be like a seven by eight and a quarter outside the page protector page. I'm just gonna do a couple quick edits on it to get it where I like it. I like, you know, how everybody's on the couch and it just, it's a photo that I quite enjoy. Woo, not that much. 
Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's crop this down to seven inches by eight and a quarter inches, which allows us to all just kind of fit in here. Looks good to me. It will hole punch on this side over here on the right side. And then uh, because this is going to be a double page layout, but it's actually going to be outside of the page protector and then inside page protectors, that's going to make it 13 inches, not 14, by eight and a quarter. So I can take this large photo that I have just created. I also want to save it as a seven by eight and a quarter photo. And we're going to paste it onto my mock-up version. This is the left side. The right side is a divided page protector that has a six by four and two three by fours. So let's go ahead and get those opened up as well. I have a variety of cards that I'm looking at that I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do here. What I do know is that this whole design concept was around these three chipboard pieces from the uh, January stories by the month. So I want to open these up really quick. And my idea is to use half of them as um, a decorative half and then half of them as a journaling half. This is gonna make more sense in a moment. These are 1.68 inches in diameter. So what I want to do is create a, um, a rectangle. That is what I wanna say. I want you to be 1.68 inches wide by half of that, which is going to be five, six, seven, eight, point four, point eight four inches. Let's see if I did that right. I think I did. <laughs> it seems right enough. Um, so I want to do this first. So what I'm going to do is um, merge the rectangle and the circle together into one thing. Then I wanna grab my magic wand tool and I'm going to select, oh no, I shouldn't have made you black. Let's make you a different color. Let's make this like fuchsia. Oh, that's obnoxious. Okay, then we will merge it together. Then I will use my magic wand to select the fuchsia and we're gonna delete it off. Yay. So now what we are left with is half of a circle, right? So I want to actually turn this, I probably should have, um, done the opposite side, but that's okay. We're going to turn this. I want to copy it and I want to paste it over here on my, on my photo. Maybe I'll put this into the middle. Okay. And we're going to do this two more times, um, which actually what I will do, let's just copy that and paste it. And let's just Clip it in there <laughs> instead of having to redo that same thing a bunch more times. Okay, so there's that one. And then this beacon again one, we'll do the same thing. Or I guess we'll merge it there and bring it over. Okay. To make the back side of this, I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool I want to make a white rectangle. We're gonna put it over top of the entire thing, clip it into the circle and merge that together because <laughs> that's gonna give me a, just a plain white circle in the exact size uh, as the rest. So then I want to add this behind those three chipboard pieces like so. And these are, yeah, it's fine. Okay, so I would add journaling into those. Um, oh, what are you? 0.68 by 0.68. So let's actually just create a circle real fast. And again, all of this is inside of that 1.68. Is inside of that Patreon class that helps walk you through a lot of this same stuff. Okay, we'll add some text into there. Oop. Okay. want both of these. Okay, so that's more like what I was thinking, right? 
Okay, so I was thinking of having some journaling little spots up at the top. And then I was also thinking about using these florals, um, which would go on top. I was thinking about layering these on top and then, you know, having them be on top of the, the pattern, which I think is really pretty. So three spots to add journaling. Now, I also contemplated using this. It says, stay close to people who feel like, who feel like sunlight um, as maybe some kind of embellishment. So maybe what I would want to do is bring that back out again. Maybe we would cut you down into, oh gosh, maybe a one or 2.5 inches by 2.5 inches circle. Let's see if that's big enough. Yeah, we could make that work. And then put that on here. Potentially, I don't know. I was thinking about it. Maybe that might be too many circles. Um, and then on the opposite side, I really like this card that says these moments and memories mean so much to me. I need to put it into the middle. And then um, I was thinking maybe the this like January three things card could go there. And then actually maybe what we want is this one up at the top and not there. Have maybe a label or something down there. I don't know. Um, what is another option? Or we could just stick to blues. Or I could add, <laughs> oh, and see this is where things get like a little muddled. Okay, we could do this one, like let's begin with wholehearted wide open hearts, love a fresh start, January three things. And we also have three things there. So that gives me like six places to add little snippets of story. Um, hmm. Kind of like this. I feel like the yellow is too much. But then I could also add a bit more journaling here if I wanted to via labels or something, something of that nature. I think this might be what I would go with right here and let this be the, the, um, the layout, right? Um, you could add text boxes to the card so on. There we go. Anyway, it's just kind of playing around with your supplies digitally before you make the decisions on the physical product. It makes everything just so much easier, right? And it makes you more confident in your decision making anyways when you actually go to put the things together. So let's save this one too. I want to call this one Let's begin layout. That way I can remember what it all looks like and what I was planning to do when I go to do it later. All right, friends, that is it for today. So um, I hope this was informative and I hope this gives you a good starting place for how Photoshop can be a tool for scrapbooking and how I am using it on a daily basis to help me design and create my own layouts that help me tell the stories of my life. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Do you use any digital programs to help you design your layouts? Is this something that you do? Do you pre-design in a digital format before working on your products physically? Is this something you would consider doing? Let me also know that in the comments below. Friends, I will be back again next Friday where I will be sharing the setup for my February uh, daily journal. And then starting in the month of 
February, I will begin sharing process videos for the stories that are going to live inside of my 2023 yearbook. We're just a little too early still. Uh, I want to wait until the month ends so I can go back and fill out my gratitudes page and all of that kind of stuff to take you along for um, the creation of that process. Anyway, so in February, you can look forward to some actual process videos. Uh, and then in the next week, you'll see my February daily journal setup. All right. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your weekend and I will see you in the next video. Bye friends.